Hello everyone, this is Ms. Fatma and this is an overview of Unit 1 of AP Human Geography titled Thinking Geographically. So let's begin. About Unit 1, uh, the first unit sets a foundation for the course by teaching you how geographers approach the study of places. So you are encouraged to reflect on the why of where to better understand geographic perspectives. Uh, you are also asked to apply a spatial perspective when reading and analyzing qualitative and quantitative data. You learn the ways information from data sources such as maps, tables, charts, satellite images and infographics inform policy decisions such as voting, redistricting or expanding transformation, transformation networks. You'll also learn about how people influence and are influenced by the environment, the resulting impact on topography, natural resources, and climate, and the difference between, between and consequences of environmental determinism and possibilism. Two theories you'll learn about. And finally, you're introduced to the language of geography, learning discipline-specific terminology and applying that language to contemporary text, real-world scenarios, so you can better study population processes and patterns in the next unit. I basically call this unit your toolbox. So all the terminology you will learn in this unit, you will apply in other units, inshallah, all the terminology and the concepts. So for one point, one is introduction to maps and here, uh, uh, for enduring understanding, you should understand that geographers use maps and data to depict relationships of time, space, and scale. The objective in this unit will be to identify different types of maps, types of information presented in maps, and different kinds of spatial patterns and relationships portrayed in maps. Uh, what you need to know is the types of maps, including reference maps and thematic maps. You need to know the types of spatial patterns represented on maps, including absolute and relative distance and direction, clustering, dispersal, and elevation. You will also have to know all maps are selective in information and that maps projections inevitably distort spatial relationships in shape, area, distance, and direction. In 1.2, uh, the main topic is that geographers use maps and data to depict relationships of time, space, and scale. And our main objective here will be to identify different methods of geographic data collection. Um, what you need to know here is that that data may be gathered in the field by and organized by individuals. Uh, geospatial, you learn about geospatial technologies that include geographic information systems, the GIS, the satellite navigation systems, remote sensing, and online mapping and visualization. You'll also need to know about the spatial information that can come from written accounts in the form of field observations, media reports, travel narratives, uh, policy documents, personal interviews, landscape analysis, and photographic representation. In topic 1.3, we're going to look at the power of geographic data. And here mainly you... Uh, the main subject is that geographers use maps and data to depict relationships of time, space, and scale. And the learning objective will be to explain the geographical effects of decisions made using geographical information. So how we use this geographic data that we collect from our different sources. And uh, what you need to know here, the essential knowledge is that geospatial and geographical data, including census data and satellite imagery, are used at all scales for personal, business, and organizational and governmental decision-making purposes. 
Let's look at 1.4. And 1.4, we talk about spatial concepts. And here, geographers analyze relationships among and between places to reveal important spatial patterns. Our learning objective is to define major geographic concepts that illustrate spatial relationships. And the essential knowledge, what we need to know here is that spatial concepts include absolute, relative location, space, place, flows. We're going to talk about distant decay, time-space compression, and pattern. And topic 1.5 talks about human environmental interaction. And here, geographers analyze relationships among and between places to reveal important spatial patterns. And our learning objective is to explain how major geographic concepts illustrate spatial relationships. The essential knowledge you need to know here is that concepts of nature and society include sustainability, natural resources, and land use. You also need to learn about the theories regarding the interactions of natural environment with human societies have evolved from environmental determinism to possibilism. In 1.6, we talk about the scales of analysis. Here we talk about global, national, regional, state, and local scales. And the learning objective here is to define scale of analysis used by geographers and explain what scales of analysis reveal. These are the objectives. What you need to know here is that scales of analysis include global, regional, national, and local. You also need to know patterns and processes at different scales reveal variation in and different interpretations of data. And finally, 1.7 is regional analysis. And here we talk about uh, formal, functional, and perceptual regions. And learning objectives is describe different ways that geographers define regions. And what you need to know, the essential knowledge here is regions are defined on the basis of one or more unifying characteristics or on patterns of activity. And you need to know that the types of regions include formal, functional, and perceptual vernacular regions. Um, you also need to know that regional boundaries are transitional, often are contested and overlapping. And Finally, that geographers apply regional analysis at local, national, and global scale. I hope this was useful, and thank you for listening.